Welcome to my YouTube channel, a binary of seven. Today I am going to solve the fourth assignment of design of reinforced concrete structures. First question: The maximum spacing of shear reinforcement measured along the axis of the member shall not exceed. So there are three provisions to provide shear reinforcement spacings. So they are. So the first one is spacing S V is equal to 0.87 S Y A S V into D divided by V U S. And second one is spacing S V is equal to 0.75 times D, where D is equal to effective depth. And third one is spacing is equal to 300 mm. Okay. So out of the three. Whichever is minimum, we will get that much spacing we need to provide between shear reinforcement bars. Okay, so the answer is D for question number one. Next question. So the most important, very conceptual question. He has given match list. So in the list one and list two, he has given the type of cracks and Angle of inclination in the list two. Okay, so for which type of crack will occur at what inclination? Clear? So I write all the theory here. So the first crack is diagonal tension cracks are at an angle. Forty-five degrees at the supports due to shear. So, because of shear force, there is a chance of development of diagonal tension cracks at an angle forty-five degrees. So, for option A, it is one. Okay. So, these are diagonal tension cracks in option A, and the angle is forty-five degrees. Coming to next type of crack. In compression zone, the shear cracks are at forty-five degrees. So, generally, in a simply supported beam, the top portion is subjected to compression and the bottom portion is subjected to tension. So, in the compression zone, that is above neutral axis. Shear crack will be developed at an angle forty-five degrees. So for option B, it is also one. So A and B will have the same answer. That is at forty-five degrees. Clear. And C is in between supports and mid span. The crack inclination varies from. Forty-five degrees to ninety degrees, gradually. So these type of cracks are called as flexure and shear cracks. Okay. So that is till now we have discussed the cracks at supports. So there. The type of cracks will be developed at forty-five degrees. Now, the third thing is the cracks will be developed from forty-five degrees to ninety degrees in between supports and the mid span. So, for option C, it is three. Clear. And the last crack is the cracks will be vertical. Due to bending alone, near or at the mid span, these type of cracks are called as flexure cracks. Okay, so that is these are at ninety degrees. So D two. So now the answer is A one B one. C three D two. So A one B one C three D two. So option 
three will be the perfect answer for question number two. So that is you have confirmed here that obviously at mid span the cracks will be vertical. That is ninety degrees with horizontal. That is ninety degrees with neutral axis. And at the supports there is a development of shear crack as well as flexure shear crack cracks. So they are generally lied at forty five degrees. In between these two, that is at mid span as well as at the supports. Between here, the inclination of the cracks will vary from forty five to ninety degrees. Clear? Next question. Design shear strength of concrete in a reinforced concrete beam is function of which of the following? So, first of all. to calculate design shear strength so there is a table in is 456 that table will ask you percentage of steel so that is pt is equal to ast divided by bd into 100 okay so how much percentage of longitudinal reinforcement that you have provided based on that longitudinal reinforcement you will get design shear strength clear so the answer is b for question number 3 so that is percentage of longitudinal reinforcement so you can check in the table of is 456 so based on value of percentage tension reinforcement longitudinal reinforcement for a given grade of concrete you will get tau c value clear so option 3 for question number 3 so that is it will be on option b now question number 4 a balanced reinforced concrete beam m25 grade concrete and fe415 steel has b is equal to 300 mm having a factored limiting moment that is limiting moment is equal to 125 kilo newton meter so the effective depth of the section is so we have certain formula for fe415 mu lim that is limiting moment of resistance is equal to 0.138 fck bd square so here the only unknown is d so that is d is equal to mu divided by 0.138 fck b so under root So the MU value here has given it is 125 into 10 power 6, 0.138 FCK is 25, B is equal to 300. You will get the value as approximately 347.5. So he asked the value to nearest next multiple of 10. So it will be 350 mm. Clear. The answer is B for question number four. Next question. So. From now, there are so many long answer question. Thoda dhyan rakho. I'll tell very clearly each and everything. So each question will take certain time. Clear? So after all these questions, you can able to solve. You can able to decide whether the whether the beam is required shear reinforcement or it will not require shear reinforcement, or else the beam has to be redesigned. That is, the dimensions of the beam has to be changed. depending upon the requirement okay so based on the given data so he has given first uh, i'll read the question along with writing the data so that is he has given b is equal to 300 mm so that is width of the beam and effective depth d is equal to 600 mm and clear cover cc is equal to 25 along with this m25 m20 concrete that is is equal to fck is equal to 20 and f5 415 design shear force v u is equal to 200 into 10 cube newton m20 f u 415 and maximum shear stress permitted this is most important tau max is equal to 2.8 mpa clear and he has given ast is equal to 5 bars of 25 mm bars that is total reinforcement is equal to 2454.3 mm square okay so now 
what he is asking which of the following statements are correct in regard of shear design so in the design of shear in the design of a beam for shear which of the following statements are correct so all the statements are having values tau v tau c and tau c max there are three values but he has given tau c max already now our question is to calculate tau v and tau c okay so as explained in the earlier problem design shear strength that is tau c depends on percentage longitudinal reinforcement so that is pt this is pt is equal to percentage longitudinal reinforcement ast divided by bd into 100 so ast is equal to 5 into pi by 4 25 square divided by b is 300 d is equal to 600 so into 100 we will get 1.36 percentage okay so based on this percentage tension reinforcement we need to get a tau c value depending upon the grade of concrete okay so that is pt and tau c so he has given in the table so that is pt is equal to 1.25 tau c value will be 0.67 and pt is equal to 1.50 tau c value will be 0.72 Now I got PT value as 1.36. That is in between 1.25 and 1.50. Corresponding to this, I need tau c value. Okay, so this can be calculated by 1.50 minus 1.25. This minus this divided by this minus this. 1.50 minus 1.36. That will be is equal to similarly 0.72 minus 0.67. Divided by 0.72 minus tau c. So if you will calculate this equation, you will get a tau c is equal to 0.69. Clear? So tau c max is 2.8. Tau c is equal to 0.69. Now we need to calculate tau v value. That is nominal shear stress. Nominal shear stress tau v is equal to v u by v d. So Vu is design shear force. That is, he has given it is 200 kilonewton. P is 300. D is equal to 600. So you will get it is 1.11 MPa. Okay. So that is tau V is equal to 1.11 MPa. So out of the three values, tau V lied in between tau C and tau C max. Tau C, tau C max. So this we confirm it right. Which option will be correct? Tau C less than tau V less than tau C max. So answer D for question number five. Okay. Here this thing you need to remember very carefully. How to calculate tau C value corresponding to one point three six? I will not teach this again, again, again. I write as it is. Okay. Next question. Following are the details of a rectangular beam. Same data as given in the question number five. Okay, I am taking same values. Tau C max is equal to two point eight. Tau C is equal to point six nine, and tau V is equal to one point one one mv. So the condition that he has given in the five question number five, I decided. Now. What he is asking, the critical shear capacity of the beam is equal to. So that is by providing longitudinal reinforcement alone, which value we will get based on percentage of reinforcement, tau c value we will get. So that is without providing shear reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement alone will provide certain shear capacity. So he is asking, what is the critical shear capacity? That is. Critical shear capacity is equal to tau c into b into d. So tau c value we got it is 0.69. B is 300. D is equal to 600. You will get it is 124.2 kilonewton. Clear. So the answer is C for question number six. 
okay the data same data as he has given in the question number 5 that's why i haven't discussed much okay coming to question number 7 he has given the data b is equal to 300 mm d is equal to he has given overall depth i need to calculate effective depth overall depth is equal effective depth is equal to overall depth minus clear cover minus half of reinforcement so i will get it is 565 mm is the effective depth and he has given ast 5 bars of 20 mm dia so it will be 1570.8 mm square and along with this fck is equal to 20 fi is equal to 415 so what he has asked he has given some statements nominal shear stress of the beam shear reinforcement need not be provided and the beam has to be redesigned so out of the following given statements which of those statements are correct which of the statements are incorrect generally many questions they will ask which of the following statements are correct but here he hasn't asked the questions uh, the statements correct statements here you need to identify the incorrect statements okay so now first of all calculate percentage tension reinforcement pt is equal to ast by bd into 100 So AST is one five seven zero point eight, B is three hundred, and five five sixty five is D into hundred. That will be percentage tension reinforcement is point nine three. Corresponding to this point nine three and M twenty grade concrete, tau C is equal to point six not three. Clear? So I haven't discussed how to calculate this tau C value again earlier in the problem. I discussed. Okay. Follow the same approach. You will get tau C. And tau C max, we know already, 2.8 MPa for M20 grade concrete. Clear? Now, nominal shear stress he asked tau V is equal to Vu by Vd into 100. So Vu, the shear force, the design shear force he has given here, it is 350 kilonewton. So 350 into 1000, V is 300. And 565 into 100, it will be 2.06 MPa. So according to the values, tau V, tau C less than tau V, and that is less than tau C max. Okay. So here you need to observe this point very carefully. So whenever tau C is less than tau C, so here tau C value. Is less than tau V value. That is, longitudinal reinforcement will alone not sufficient to carry sufficient to carry shear. Okay, we need to provide some extra reinforcement. Okay, and the question one more thing you need to clarify here is if tau V greater than tau C max, then the section has to be redesigned. The section has to be redesigned. Clear. And now in this case, tau V less than tau C max. So the section is okay. But as it is tau C less than tau V, we need to provide shear reinforcement. Here nominal shear stress two point zero six. Here we got no. So the first statement is correct. And shear reinforcement is required. Is required. So statement two is wrong, and the beam has to be redesigned. The beam has to be redesigned is the statement three. That is, no need to redesign the beam because we got tau v less than tau c max. If tau v greater than tau c max, the beam has to be redesigned. So statement three is also wrong. So the incorrect statements are two and three. So the answer for this question is option C. Clear. And in the next question, he has given two rectangular beams B one and B two are of similar cross section with a width of three hundred and overall depth is four fifty. They are provided with twenty mm dia and a few four one five bars on the tension side with a clear cover of twenty five mm. 
and uh, the beams are constructed with concrete grade having tau c max so we write tau c max the required data is 2.5 mpa and he also given tau c value 0.8 mpa so the designs here for v u 1 for b1 it is 350 kilo newton and b u 2 for b2 it is 450 kilo newton clear so now what is the condition of b1 beam and what is the condition of b2 beam so now i'll write the data first we will go with b1 beam so the b1 beam is width is equal to 300 mm and depth effective depth d is equal to he has given overall depth we need to calculate effective depth so that is effective depth is equal to overall depth minus clear cover minus half of reinforcement it will be 415 and he has given tau c is equal to 0.8 so we will calculate tau v is equal to so for b1 beam the design shear is 350 into 1000 divided by b is 300 and it is 415 into 100 so you will get tau v is equal to 2.81 mpa and tau c max he has given it is 3.1 so that we need to get tau c max is here you can see he has given it is the concrete grade having tau c max 2.5 mpa so tau c max is equal to 2.5 mpa so here you can say it is tau v greater than tau c max okay so whenever the value of nominal shear stress is greater than maximum design strength maximum shear design strength so here you need to make redesign for the beam so b1 beam has to be redesigned okay so check the option the reinforcement the section for both so we will go with the next beam b2 beam so b is equal to 300 and d is equal to 415 tau c is equal to 0 0.8 and tau v value will change here design shear force is 450 kilo newton and b is 300 415 into 100 so it will become 3.61 MPA. So here also tau c max is equal to 2.5 MPA. So here also tau b greater than tau c max. Okay. So here also b2 beam has to be redesigned. Okay. So for re the condition required to redesign the beam is tau b greater than tau c max. For both beam b1 as well as beam b2 the condition has satisfied that is tau v greater than tau c max so in this case the sections both b1 and b2 should be revised or redesigned so option d for question number 8 okay now coming to question number 9 you can see here i'll write the given data and after that we will go with the statements that he has given so Coming to factored load, W is equal to 65 kilo newton per meter. That is, he has given here factored load is equal to 65 kilo newton per meter square. By that, we can get M max, maximum bending moment is equal to WL square by 8. 65 into effective span, he has given it is pi square divided by 8. It is 203.13 kilo newton meter. And we can calculate MU limb. That is equal to 0.138 FCK PD square. 0.138 FCK is 20. P is 300. P square is 500 square. You will get it is 207 kilo newton meter. Clear. So now the bending moment that is occurring because of application of the load is 203. And limiting bending moment itself is more than 203. That is 207. Obviously, the section can be designed as under-reinforced section. So, the 
the section can be under reinforced section so coming to statement 1 the beam section is an over reinforced so statement 1 is wrong okay next for this section how much amount of reinforcement has to be required so that's what he is asking so AST required is equal to the most important formula you can calculate directly if you know the value of bending moment 0.5 FCK divided by F5 1 minus 1 minus 4.6 MU divided by FCK BD square this term will be under the root so you will get 0.5 into 20 divided by 4 on 5 1 minus 1 minus 4.6 203 into 10 power 6 divided by 20 into 300 into 500 square. So you will get it is 1394.96 mm square. So this amount of reinforcement it is required to carry a bending moment of 203 kN meter. So now this is required, this is AST required. Now number of bars. So, number of 20 mm bars, let us take 20 mm bars, he has, he has adapted there, it is 1394 divided by 5 by 4 into 20 square, total reinforcement divided by area of uh, 1 reinforcement bar, you will get it is number of bars 4.4, so we cannot provide 4.4 bars, so we need to provide 5 bars, that is, so 5 bars of 20 mm dia has to be provided. Okay, so now the amount of reinforcement provided is not equal to 1394, it is required. So now we will calculate AST provided is equal to 5 into 5 by 4 20 square, it will be 1570.8 mm square. Clear? So now coming to the second statement. So as a longitudinal reinforcement, 5 number of 20 bars can be provided. Yes, it is right. So statement 2 is correct. Now he has given, you can calculate factor and shear force. He has given intensity of load. You can get a factor and shear force. Vu is equal to WL by 2. So that is 65 into L is 5 divided by 2. It is 162.5. Nominal shear. Tau V is equal to VU by BD. So that is VU is 162.5 into 1000 divided by 300 into 500. So that is equal to 1.08. So you can calculate uh, percentage tension reinforcement. That is AST by BD into 100. That is equal to 1570.8 300 into 500. So into 100 it will be 1.05 percentage. So corresponding to this 1.05 percentage tau c is equal to 0.63. So you know tau v value, you know tau c value. He has given tau c max as in the problem you can see it is tau c max. It will be maximum shear stress per weight it is 2.8. So tau c max is equal to 2.8 MPa. So from all the values tau c less than tau v less than tau c max clear so in this case shear reinforcement Shear reinforcement has to be provided for how much capacity that is steel has to carry shear how much shear V U S is equal to tau V minus tau C into BD. So that is 1.08 minus 0 0.63 into 300 into 500. So that is equal to 675.00 kilonewton that is 67.5 kilonewton. 
So check the statement. Statement 3 is correct. The shear reinforcement will resist 67.5 kN and by providing stirrups using 8 mm two legged stirrups. So ASV is equal to two legged means into two five by four into eight square. It will be 100.5 mm square. Now we can get spacing. Already in the first question, how to get spacing? I explained. 0.87 FY ASV into V divided by VUS. So that is equal to 0.87 FY is 415. ASV is 100.5. D is 500. VUS is equal to 67500. So spacing you will get it is 266.87 mm. And this is one provision. And the second provision spacing 1 and 2 is 0.75 into D that is 0.75 into D is 500 it will be 375 and that third provision is third provision is spacing 3 is equal to 300 mm out of this 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 whichever is minimum 266 so you can provide 2 like the 8 mm bars at 260 mm center to center Clear? So, option 4 you can check. The shear reinforcement could met by providing 2 legged 8 mm stirrups at 260 mm center to center. So, option 2, 3, 4 are correct. The only incorrect statement is 1. So, that is question number uh, 9 will have an answer. Option A. Clear? Very long answer question. Okay. So, by this how to design shear reinforcement for how much shear you need to provide the reinforcement and which type of bars two legged bars and how to calculate spacing clear so now the last question is a rectangular beam of width b is equal to 300 mm and having overall depth i can calculate the effective depth 600 minus 25 minus 20 by 2 it is 565 and provided with 520 number of diameter bars that is AST is equal to 5 into 5 by 420 square so it is 1570.8 mm square and we will get uh, PT is equal to AST by BD into 100 same story so that is 1570.8 300 into 565 into 100 that is 0.93 and corresponding to this 0.93 tau C value is 0.603. Clear? And we will calculate nominal shear stress tau V is equal to VU by BD. That is, so VU here it is 500 kN. So let me here, the design shear force is 500 kN. So 500 into 1000 divided by 300 into 565 into 100. You will get it is. 2.95 so to 2.95 MPA so from this tau C max is equal to 2.8 MPA and tau V is 2.9 MPA so what he has asked so now provide two leg to provide two leg to whether the increase the depth of the beam the most important so here whenever tau V less than tau C max and tau V greater than tau C then shear reinforcement has to be designed. But here tau V greater than tau C max. Is there any requirement of shear? That is the beam will fail in shear. The beam will fail in shear. Clear? Now what we have to do? We need to decrease this tau V value. So what is the formula for tau V? Tau V is equal to VU by BD. So that is this D value if you increase you will get tau V value less than tau C max. Clear? So that is the option increase the depth of the beam. Okay. Very important question. He has not given like increase the depth uh, 
redesign the beam. So redesigning the beam means changing the dimensions again. Okay. So changing the dimensions again means increasing the depth of the beam. That is answer D for question number 10. Clear? So this is the end of assignment 4. Okay. Thank you.